back to Indiana News Desk. Well, it seems straightforward, tell people what they're eating. But critics say a new bill designed to tell people whether their food is genetically modified may actually mask the contents. Lindsay Wright has the story. I was actually going to get some cheese here, but I've never actually tried this. Fabi Calvo pays pretty close attention to what's in her food. She's careful when she's at the grocery store, not just because she's allergic to milk, but because she cares about what she's eating in general, something many of us can relate to. It doesn't say, oh, non-GMO, okay. So they do label it here, non-GMO expeller press. Congress recently approved legislation that requires food labels to list genetically modified ingredients, or GMOs. And you'd think it'd be as easy as looking on the package to see what's in the food you're eating. For example, I can clearly see the number of calories in this box of pasta, but the GMO labeling bill could make it trickier than that, and it's leading to some mistrust in consumers. Unlike nutrition labels that clearly list what's in the product, the bill requires packages to either have a text label, a symbol, or an electronic code readable by smartphone, which indicates whether the food contains GMOs. Agriculture groups, which once fought against mandatory labeling, support the bill. And many pro-labeling advocates are unhappy with the new bill. They call the regulations cheating because they're not required to list straightforward information. Purdue Agricultural Economics spokesperson Jessica I says the bill is problematic because it's a very clear compromise. You get a little bit of what some people want and you get a little bit of what the other people want and you get this kind of in the middle solution, which no one is totally happy with. Consumers want transparent information about what's in their food and they worry they won't get it, especially with electronic labeling. But the controversy over GMOs in general, not just with labeling, is a complicated one. And I says it's been an issue since the beginning. It's a terrifying name. Most people don't know what it is. It sounds like you don't want your food that way. Um, and so from the get go, it kind of had an awkward start in terms of public perception of, of GMOs. A 2012 Pew study that looked at a wide range of topics even found the highest disparity between scientific and public perception to be the topic of GMOs. 88% of scientists say GMOs are safe, with only around 37% of U.S. adults agreeing. And part of that, I says, is because the agricultural industry didn't respond well to the shift in consumers' interest to food. It put forward this kind of crisis to the agricultural sector, like how are we going to deal with the logistics of like a patchwork of laws across the states. It's going to be very costly. It's going to be very confusing. Even the Bloomington farmers market felt the need to respond to consumer concern over GMOs. Officials held a GMO panel to gauge public opinion on the topic. Many voiced their desire for clear labeling. Others argued against misconceptions. Columbus farmer David Simmons says it's unfortunate there's so much misinformation. He thinks GMOs are safe and uses it for sweet corn. I'm, I'm really looking more at, at educating people rather than having people label something. Um, because labeling insinuates risk. Whereas education, just like this meeting right here, we educate the people on what a GMO product is. That panel was hosted nearly a year ago. And market manager Marsha Veldman says the farmer's market created its own regulations to ease concern. We wanted um, to respond to customer interest. I think a lot of the reason people shop at the farmer's market is there's a level of transparency. Veldman says with a signed bill, the farmer's market will review its own regulations to make sure they are in compliance. And that's important to consumers like Calvo. Yeah, I wouldn't go to a place that wouldn't have a clear label because I need to know what's in it. <laughs> For Indiana News Desk, I'm Lindsay Wright. The U.S. Department of Agriculture has two years to write the rules as outlined in the bill. That means a lot of details still have to be worked out. President Obama is expected to sign the bill.